Hello, everyone. I'm Neural Sin, and welcome back to another episode in my series where we are taking a look at the auto crafting dropper functionality contained within Nembomb's Carpet Mod. In the previous episode, we took a look at the basic mechanics of the auto crafting dropper and built up a simple automatic 3x3 block crafting device, leveraging one of the specific mechanics, which allows us to react to the unique signal strength of a dropper pointing into a crafting table. Now, there are many ways to design auto crafting contraptions, and this guide is by no means meant to provide an exhaustive nor comprehensive guide to it all. Now, having said that, most of the auto crafting designs that I've seen tend to fall into one of two categories either signal strength, or what we're going to talk about today, which is pulse base. In a signal strength design, such as the very simple example from the first episode, the crafting ingredients are organized and added in response to a change in what is typically the fill level. As ingredients are added, the signal strength rises, and additional pieces of the auto crafting circuitry can be triggered. We will explore this type of approach in future episodes in greater detail, but for now it is simply important to know that such an approach exists. To provide some design context for this episode, which will focus on pulse-based design. So here we have perhaps the most simple design for a pulse generator, which ultimately corresponds to an item that will be put into our auto crafter dropper. We have an observer faced into a note block, which is then powering this particular block here, which when triggered is going to power the dropper that contains our ingredients, which will then push those ingredients into the crafting dropper. And we can see that's true. And if I continue to do this, you'll notice that the item slots are getting filled up sequentially as we would expect. Now you may wonder why this particular block is here when a design more like this is likely the more intuitive one. Well, it's because of an odd behavior when powering droppers directly from observers. So watch what happens. If I have this dropper here, which contains our ingredient, and this dropper, and then this dropper pointed into the crafting table, intuitively we would expect, much like here, that the item would be taken from this dropper and pushed into the middle one. However, as we can see, that is not the case. In fact, what happens is the item is taken out of this dropper, it skips the middle one, and is actually put the very end of the chain. Now, the discrepancy between these two single item pulses can actually be used to our advantage, as we're gonna see it a little bit later when we go ahead and build up a practical example. But for now, it's really just important to note that if we indirectly power a dropper through a block, it pushes an item forward by one, and if we power a dropper directly, it skips the adjacent dropper and goes into the next one. So these are two designs where we can get a single item into a single position into our crafting dropper. A simple extension to this is shown here, where at the bottom we have our single item layout, but then we have this extra observer pointed down into this observer which then powers this powered rail, which is being observed by this observer, which is then powering this block. So ultimately what we're going to have is one pulse, which triggers this loop here, and a second pulse. And so this is an example of a way to insert two items into the crafting dropper. But now if we introduce this lamp, an observer facing into it instead of the powered rail, we can actually generate an odd number of pulses, and in this case, it just so happens to be three. So here we have examples of a way to generate one item, two items, and three items. And for the purposes of this video, that is all we're going to need in order to build up a practical example. And that practical example is going to be crafting a piston. Now, if we group these items together, we can map them nicely to our particular generators over here. So the top row should be obvious. We're gonna be using the 
three pulse generator. Then we're gonna be using a single pulse, another single pulse, a double pulse, single pulse, and a single pulse. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin, we wanna take care of that top row. I've already gone ahead and decided that we're gonna use the note block, just like we did over there, as our trigger device. So we're gonna place our observer looking into the note block. Place this observer looking into there. I'll be putting the redstone lamp on top of it with an observer facing in and an observer looking at that observer. Now in this particular example, and you'll see why in a second, we're not gonna be powering a block and indirectly powering a dropper. Instead, we're going to power a dropper directly. And that's because what we wanna do is give ourselves some nice room so we can actually populate the ingredients inside of our auto crafting dropper, which is going to be the center one here. So if I go ahead and put in planks inside of this dropper and trigger it, you'll notice we get the chop row. And that is exactly what we want. The next up is that middle row. Now, there's different ways to go about doing this. But we are actually going to use a double pulse generator timed in such a way that we use a single pulse generator to insert that iron. And to do that, what we're going to do is take a reading off of this bottom observer, come out a bit, and set up a repeater on three ticks. Now, we want to get up here, and we want to be able to have a dropper faced in. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is actually make use of empowered rails here, with an observer facing in, an observer powering directly, again, this dropper here. So. When this particular repeater fires, it will power this powered rail, which will be detected by this observer, which will then power this powered rail and power this observer. Now, this is a double pulse generator simply because this powered rail here is first gonna turn on, which generates our first pulse, and then it's going to turn off, which is actually gonna generate the second pulse. You can see that we put in some cobblestone, still have our planks in here. We can see that we get our two cobblestones. So now the trick is getting that center iron ingot into place. For that, we're gonna to come to the center here, throw in some iron ingots, and we're going to use our indirect single pulse generator. We're gonna do that by running in a repeater into a block that sits on top of this. And again, because it's indirect, what's gonna happen is this block is going to be powered, which will power this dropper, which will push forward the iron ingot one block, which just so happens to be our auto crafting dropper. To power this whole thing, we're going to take an observer and have that observer Face this powered rail. And that's the same powered rail that's powering our double pulse, which means that this observer is going to fire at the same time as this observer because they're sharing the same rail. The only difference is that we're going to introduce a delay of two, whereas this one has no intermediate delay. And so we go over here, take a look at what we have. You'll notice that we have three planks on top, followed by a cobblestone, followed by the timed iron ingot, followed by the last cobblestone. So that gives us our second row. We now need a way to generate one, two more cobblestone. For that, we're going to use this side of the auto crafting dropper. Go ahead and point one in there. 
fill that with cobblestone. And what we're gonna do is piggyback off of the signal that is going into this block, which is powering the iron ingot. And this is a way for us to keep the circuit closed in such a way that things are starting to happen in sequence. And we can see that because this generates our top row, which then because of the delay there, triggers our cobblestone, which because of the delay here, triggers the intermediate iron ingot. And now we wanna begin a new chain where we're starting to power here. And we're gonna do that indirectly as well. And if we take a look at that, we can see that we got the pulse that we wanted. The next step is to get the redstone in place. And so for that, we're just gonna bring down a line a drop rate. Put the redstone there. And something interesting is going to happen here. When I trigger this whole thing, you notice we actually have the fully populated ingredients here. And that's because you'll notice this line of observers actually fires twice. And what that winds up doing is powering this dropper a second time. And so finally the last step is to trigger the crafting itself. For that, we're simply going to continue this line down. Throw in a little bit of delay so that what should happen is that these repeaters should be triggered right at the end as the redstone and the cobblestone the final row. And as we can see, we just crafted ourselves a dropper. And we've done so again. So hopefully that was helpful, and thank you for watching. Bye!